Here's an easy way to calculate Euclidean rhythms by hand. You might already be familiar with these. A Euclidean rhythm tries to distribute a certain number of notes as evenly as, as possible in a bar of music. Usually, you do this with a modified version of Euclid's algorithm from over two millennia ago. And I've got a method here that's a little bit easier to work out by hand. First, you'll want to pick how long your bar is, as well as the number of notes that are gonna be in it. So in my example, I'm gonna put three notes into a bar that is seven beats long. The first step is we're just going to write out numbers in order. Looks a little funny. We're gonna start at minus one, and we're gonna keep going until we get to just before the total number of beats in the measure. So I'm gonna go, minus one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I stop. So even though my bar is supposed to be seven beats long, I've got eight numbers here. That's okay because I want the seven spaces that are in between these numbers. We'll see that in the next couple steps. Okay, step two. Now we're gonna take the number of notes that we want, in my case, that's three, and we're gonna multiply that against all the numbers that we've written down so far. So I get minus three, zero, three, six, nine, 12, 15, and 18. Easy peasy. This next step might be a little bit odd if you've never used modular arithmetic before. People from computer science or discrete mathematics will be pretty familiar with this. But the idea is that we want to take these numbers, we're going to divide by the number of beats in the measure and find the remainder. So for mine, negative three has a remainder of positive four. That's kind of a weird one, but you get used to it. Zero has a remainder of zero. Three has a remainder of three, six has a remainder of six. And now things get a little bit more interesting. Since we're dividing by seven, nine has a remainder of two. 12 has a remainder of five. 15 has a remainder of one. And 18 has a remainder of four. One of the ways you can check that you've done this all correctly is that your very first remainder, the weird one, should be the very same number as your last remainder. So things are looking good. Now we're almost ready to start writing down our notes and our rests. The last thing we gotta do, we're gonna use the remainders that we just calculated. And in between them, we're gonna write in greater than signs or less than signs, just like in good old algebra. So for me, four is bigger than zero, zero is less than three, three is less than six, six is greater than two, two is less than five, five is greater than one, and one is less than four, right? Pretty simple stuff. Now here's the trick, and this is the part where we get the rhythm. So every time you see a greater than sign, that's a note. Every time you see a less than sign, that's a rest. So for my example, I've got greater, less, less, greater, less, greater, less. And that means note, rest, rest, note, rest, note, rest. And we're done. 